Section 10 of Autobiography of Phineas Pett by Phineas Pett. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Autobiography of Phineas Pett, Part 6. Tuesday, being the 29th August, proved a very wet, rainy day, but the shipwrights of the river, which were warned to help to strike the ship upon the ways, being come together, we set on the business, and by God's blessing the ship was struck by eleven of the clock without harm to any man, which we accounted a great mercy of God. Monday the 25th of September was the day peremptorily appointed by His Majesty for launching the great ship, and accordingly all things were prepared in readiness for performance thereof. His Majesty, accompanied with the Queen and all the train of lords and ladies, their attendants, came to Woolwich, for the most part by water, landing at the dock stairs about twelve of the clock, and went directly on board the ship, where they stayed about one hour, and thence retired into our rooms, prepared and furnished for their entertainment. About two of the clock the tackles were set taut, and the ship started as they heaved, till the tackles failed and the water pinched, being a very poor tide, so that we gave over to strain the tackles, and began to shore the ship. Then his majesty with the queen took their barge and returned to Whitehall, being very sorry the ship could not be launched. We attempted two or three tides afterward to no purpose. It was then concluded to let the ship sit till the next spring, sitting so easily and safely that she could take no hurt. After it was resolved the ship should lie till the spring after, which was about the 12th or 13th October following. In the interim many malicious reports were raised to disable the ship, and to bring as much disgrace upon me as malice itself could possibly invent, all proceeding from the masters of the Trinity House and other rough-hewn seamen, with whom William Cook, one of the four masters of His Majesty's Navy, enviously adhering to pleasure Secretary Coke and Mr. Eddisbury, then newly made surveyor of His Majesty's Navy, all professed enemies to the building of the ship, and more to myself joined together to cast what aspersions upon both as far as they durst for fear of the king's displeasure but the time of the spring drawing on there was a meeting called by sir robert mansell's means at woolwich of such trinity house masters as were formerly employed on the business with the officers of the navy to resolve of the certain day and time of launching which was generally concluded to be on sunday following being the fourteenth of october and that I should not attempt to stir the ship before. But on the Saturday night tide, the wind chopping up for westerly, and a fair night in hand promising a great tide to follow, I caused the two masters of the navy there attending to be ready, commanding all we could on the sudden get-together to attend us, contrary to the mind of Mr. Cook, who was very unwilling to meddle with the ship in the night, though Mr. Austin, the more resolute man, was very willing to take the benefit of the first opportunity to launch. The tide came in so fast that the ship was on float by three-quarters flood, which I perceiving thought it fit to command the ship to be heaved off, the night being fair and calm, which accordingly was presently performed, and the ship brought into the channel, and from thence by several warps conveyed safely to her moorings by high water, keeping lights with reed all alongst the shore, till the mooring cables were taken in and made fast to the bits, which success with much thankfulness we acknowledged an especial mercy of God towards us. This done, I presently dispatched a messenger to Sir Robert Mansell at Greenwich, who came with all speed on board us, and according to His Majesty's commandment, gave the name to the ship, and named her the Sovereign of the Seas. The next morning the company of the Trinity House Masters and others appointed to attend the launching came according to the appointment to give their attendance, but finding the ship already launched, and at her moorings in the midst of the river, they seemed to be much discontented that they were so disappointed and prevented, which they expressed as far as they durst. This morning Sir Robert Mansell rode away post to the King, lying then at Hampton Court, and acquainted his majesty with our proceedings who was wonderfully pleased with it the week following we reared the shears to set the masts which was performed with much safety and expedition 
and all the masts set within fourteen days and so soon as the rigging could be in some reasonable complete manner fitted and sails brought to the yards the ship was removed from woolwich to erith by reason there was a greater depth of water to ride in his majesty had been on board of her before she went thence on the twelfth of may sixteen thirty eight the sovereign set sail from erith to greenhithe where she anchored to take in her ordnance and provisions the sixth of june after his majesty accompanied with the queen duchess of chevreuse duke and duchess of lennox with divers other lords and ladies more came on board the ship at greenhithe where they dined to their great content at their going from the ship we gave them seventeen pieces of ordnance the tenth of february before i received particular warrants from his majesty at council table being himself there present for bringing the ship from chatham to woolwich dock which was by my care speedily performed and the ship safely dry docked the twenty-first day of march following about the twelfth of july the sovereign weighed from greenhithe and anchored a little beneath gravesend where she rode till the king's majesty came on board her which was upon the twenty-first day of july being saturday coming down in his barge and rode some part of the way against the tide in the time of his being on board his majesty observed the condition of the ship as she now rode ready to sail that is the draught of water the distance of the ports of the lower tier from the water number of the ordnance and all other circumstances to her complete furnishing wherewith he was so well satisfied and pleased that he parted from her with as much expression of content and satisfaction as we could expect from him to the general comfort of us all before his majesty took barge i had placed my then wife byland daughter anne and many other gentlewomen my special friends in the great cabin to kiss his majesty's hand and prevailed with his majesty to walk aft into the cabin where his highness most graciously gave each of them his hand to kiss his majesty then took his barge and at his going from the ship we gave him seventy-two pieces of great ordnance i then with my wife and friends went on shore and took the coach and came directly home thursday the second of august i took leave of my wife and friends at chatham after supper so rode to gravesend thence on board the sovereign and lay on board in mine cabin being the first night i lodged in her friday my son peter came on board from woolwich then about ten of the clock we weighed from gravesend and stood down beneath whole haven and there anchored that night being little wind saturday morning the fourth of august we weighed from whole haven and stood down beneath the buoy of the gumfleet where we anchored all that night sunday we came to an anchor right before margate town where we rode till thursday morning following then weighed and set sail with the wind at west but coming about the foreland we met the wind so far southerly as put us to go without the sand and blew so much wind as we could bear our topsails but half-mast high so that we could not possibly weather the south sand head the tides running all so dead we were forced to anchor in thirty-two fathom and there rode that night which proved reasonable fare friday morning the twentieth of august we weighed having the benefit of a whole tide of ebb we weathered the south sand head and stood in right thwart of dover but neither the town nor castle took notice of us so we put room into the downs and anchored as near sir john pennington then riding admiral as we conveniently could do being about eight of the clock in the morning we were saluted by the admiral and all the ships in the road whom we answered again giving the admiral twenty-one pieces this done we went on board the admiral sir john pennington to whom we were continual guests while we stayed in the downs wednesday morning being the fifteenth of august we set sail out of the downs the wind at south and sometimes south-west we turned to and fro with very foul weather till we came as high as thwart of shoreham or thereabouts the garland attending us who was not able to keep way with us which course we held till saturday the eighteenth day of august then finding in that time we had sufficient trial of the condition and working of the ship in all respects and having but a small proportion of victuals to stay out longer we resolved to bear up again for the downs 
which accordingly was done and about three o'clock afternoon we anchored close to the admiral sir john pennington entertaining us on board his ship all the time we rode by him tuesday morning the twenty first of august i took leave of the sovereign and the admiral and went on shore at deal where i found my man attending ready with my horses being the night before come hither where i presently took horse and rode directly to canterbury having visited sir henry palmer by the way i baited some hour or more at canterbury and took horse again and came home to my house at new dock a little after four in the afternoon giving god hearty thanks for my safe return finding my wife family and friends in a reasonable health the twenty eighth of august the sovereign came home to her moorings at st mary creek being tuesday the eighth of september my dear wife sickened taken with a violent fever being then great with child the nineteenth of september being wednesday between eight and nine o'clock in the morning she departed this life in a most christian manner surrendering up her spirit into his hands that gave it her the next day after being thursday she was buried in a seemly manner in chatham church close by the side of my first wife leaving me a sorrowful and disconsolate husband within few days after deceased also my wife's one sister and next neighbour wife to mr john short clerk of the check to his majesty's navy they sickened together she also being with child and knew not of one and t'other's death soon after died mr etherington their own father at mr short's house who came thither purposely to visit them after i had a little passed over this great and sudden affliction i prepared myself to go for london and having set all things in order on thursday morning the twenty seventh of september sixteen thirty eight i took leave of my family at chatham and rode to gravesend thence took boat to woolwich where i stayed one night and next day accompanied with my son peter we went by water to kingston where we took up our lodging in a private house the inns being full the next day being sunday we went by water to hampton court where we presented ourselves to his majesty who was pleased to use us very graciously where we spent that whole day at night returning by water to our lodging at kingston next morning my son and myself rode to sion to wait upon the lord admiral and was presently commanded by him to hasten to chatham to prepare barges and boats to be sent to dover for the receiving on shore the queen mother expected to arrive and land there here the manuscript ends end of section ten Section 11 of Autobiography of Phineas Pett by Phineas Pett. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Grant to Phineas Pett, 26th of April, 1604. In Latin. Patent Roll, 1646. The King to all to whom, etc., greeting. Whereas our dearest sister Elizabeth, late deceased Queen of England, by her letters patent, under the great seal of england bearing date at westminster the twenty-third day of january in the twenty-sixth year of her reign gave and granted for herself her heirs and successors unto matthew baker and john addy shipwrights and to the longer liver of either of them among other things a certain annuity or annual rent of twelve pence sterling a day to have and to receive yearly the said annuity or annual rent of twelve pence sterling a day to the aforesaid matthew baker and john addy and their assigns and to the longer liver of either of them from the feast of the nativity of the lord then last passed before the date of the same letters patent during the natural life of the same matthew baker and john addy and the longer liver of either of them from her treasury and that of her heirs and successors at the receipt of the exchequer at westminster of herself her heirs and successors at the hands of the treasurer and chamberlain of her her heirs and successors there for the time in being at the four terms of the year namely the feast of the annunciation of the blessed virgin mary of st john the baptist of st michael the archangel and of the nativity of the lord in equal portions and whereas also our same dearest sister elizabeth 
by other letters patent under the great seal of england bearing date at westminster the twenty ninth day of july in the thirty-second year of her reign gave and granted for herself her heirs and successors to joseph pett shipwright another annuity or annual fee of twelve pence a day of lawful money of england to have hold and receive unto the same joseph pett and his assigns during the natural life of the same joseph pett from the treasury of her her heirs and successors at the receipt of the exchequer at westminster by the hands of the treasurer and chamberlain there and from time to time existing as by the several said letters patent more plainly doth appear which said matthew baker and john addy and joseph pett to this day remain alive and to this present have and enjoy the said several annuities by virtue of the several letters patent aforesaid know ye that we of our special grace and sure knowledge and mere motion also in consideration of the good true and faithful service to us done and hereafter to be done by our beloved and faithful subject phineas pett now serving our dearest son henry prince of wales both in the building of the ships of us our heirs and successors and in his attendance on our marine affairs and causes have given and granted and by these presents for ourself our heirs and successors do give and grant to the same phineas pett that annuity or annual fee of twelve pence sterling a day of good and lawful money of england out of the two above named annuities whichever first after the date of these presents by death resignation surrender or composition of any one of the aforesaid matthew baker and john addy and joseph pett or in any other manner shall have become vacant or determined or shall hereafter become vacant or cease to have hold enjoy and receive the said annuity or annual fee of twelve pence a day as is in manner aforesaid vacated or determined or shall hereafter determine to the aforesaid phineas pett or his assigns for the term of the natural life of the same phineas immediately from the time at which either of those annuities shall first become vacant or determine as aforesaid from the treasury of us our heirs and successors at the receipt of our exchequer at westminster by the hands of the treasurers and chamberlains of us our heirs and successors from there time to time in being at the four terms of the year namely at the feast of st michael the archangel the nativity of the lord the annunciation of the blessed virgin mary and the nativity of st john the baptist in equal portions to the aforesaid phineas pett or his assigns during the natural life of the same phineas pett annually to be paid the first payment thereupon commencing at that feast of the aforesaid feasts which first and nearest shall fall after one of the two separate aforesaid annuities of twelve pence a day shall become vacant or determined in the mode and fashion above specified although express mention etc in witness etc witness the king at westminster the twenty sixth day of april by writ of the privy seal end of section eleven section twelve of autobiography of phineas pett by phineas pett this librivox recording is in the public domain petition of shipwrights for incorporation fifteen seventy eight no signatures or date s p domina elizabeth two hundred and twenty seven sixty three to the right honourable the lords of her majesty's most honourable privy council in most humble and reverent wise do complain unto your honours as well as the master shipwrights of her majesty's ships as also all other of the same art that take charge over any of that faculty be it in ships boats barges or any such like vessels both appertaining to her majesty or her highness's subjects specially within the liberty of the thames and other places near adjoining to the same in which place as all kind of vessels are greatly increased so are the artificers likewise augmented only in number but less in skill whereby such as do use them are not only deceived but also the work greatly endangered besides their manners are mutinous even in her majesty's service and their exactions intolerable amongst her majesty's subjects 
these and many other enormities which daily increase to the great grief of many her majesty's good and honest subjects may bring the art to a ruinous state in tender consideration of the premises we humbly pray your honours to be a mean unto her highness that a corporation may be granted in such reasonable form as her majesty's learned counsel shall allow of and be thought meet for us whereby her majesty in her own navy shall be more safely and dutifully served the whole state through the realm better furnished and we daily bound to pray to almighty god both for her majesty and your honour's most happy and prosperous estate end of section twelve Section 13 of Autobiography of Phineas Pett by Phineas Pett. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Charter to Shipwrights, 22nd of April, 1605. Patent Rolls, 1684. James, etc. To all to whom these presents shall come greeting. Whereas we are credibly informed as well by our right trusty and well-beloved cousin and counsellor, Charles, Earl of Nottingham, High Admiral of England and Captain General of our Navy Royal, as also by our principal officers of our said Navy, how slenderly and deceitfully, as well our own ships and barges, as also other ships, boats, pinnaces, and like vessels of our merchants, and other our subjects used in continual service and traffic, are made and wrought to the great loss danger and prejudice of us and our said subjects and also of the great and wasteful charge and expense which we do from time to time bear and sustain in building and repairing our own ships and pinnaces which are and have been the chiefest and greatest defence of this our realm from the assaults of such enemies as have practised the overthrow of the same we weighing the manifold dangers losses and hindrances which may and are likely more and more to ensue thereof if speedy remedy be not therefore had and provided and to the end that the fittest and ablest shipwrights and workmen may from time to time as cords shall require be made known unto our principal officers of the navy and to be employed for wages for the building repairing and making of our own ships and pinnaces as also may have the oversight of all such other workmen as shall from time to time be employed or shall intermeddle in building of other ships pinnaces or vessels for other of our merchants and subjects for the further more better and continual service of us our realm and subjects know ye therefore that we intending to provide for the better strengthening of this our realm with shipping for the defence and service thereof and to the intent that as well ourself as also our merchants and other subjects may from time to time hereafter be furnished stored and supplied with skilful shipwrights and workmen of that kind to work upon our navy and other ships and vessels for the better suppressing of deceits and other abuses which may hereafter be practised by diverse persons which shall take upon them without sufficient skill and knowledge to make or repair ships pinnaces and other vessels to the great danger and hindrance as well of ourself as of diverse other loving subjects of our special grace at certain knowledge and mere motion have given granted constituted and ordained and by these presents for us our heirs and successors do grant constitute and ordain that all and every person and persons being shipwrights or carpenters using the art or mystery of building and making of ships within this realm of england and dominion of wales shall be from henceforth for ever one body corporate and body politic in matter deed and name by the name of master wardens and commonality of the art or mystery of shipwrights of england to be one master and four wardens and twelve assistants do assign name ordain and constitute our well-beloved subject matthew baker our servant and ancientest master shipwright to be the first master joseph pett and william bright two other of our master shipwrights edward stevens of limehouse and nicholas simonson of ratcliffe in the county of middlesex shipwrights to be the first four wardens 
john addy of deptford in the county of kent phineas pett of chetham in the county of kent john apslin of the said town and county peter pett of wapping in the county of middlesex nicholas clay of redriff in our county of surrey thomas cole of woodbridge in our county of suffolk robert wilkinson of ipswich in our county of suffolk james russell of southwark in our said county of surrey john head in our county of bristol esau whitehead of our town of southampton in the county of southampton thomas dimmock of horsey down in the said county of surrey and thomas prime of yarmouth in the county of norfolk shipwrights to be the first and present twelve assistants power to hold and dispose of real property to plead and defend in any court to have a common seal to meet in a convenient house or hall for their use to be by them provided within the city of london or suburbs of the same or within five miles of the said city nicholas rabbi gentleman to be the first and present clerk power to meet in their hall and to entreat consult determine constitute ordain and make any constitutions statutes laws ordinances articles and orders whatsoever touching or concerning the good estate rule order and good government of the said master wardens and commonality and in what order and manner the said master wardens and commonality and all other person and persons using the said art or mystery within this realm of england or dominion of wales shall demean and behave themselves with power to punish offenders power to view search and survey all and every the works and workmanship of all and every person or persons whatsoever making working or building or which hereafter shall make work or build any manner of ships pinnaces or other vessels and all manner of timber and wood appointed provided and fitted for the building of ships ships found to be falsely and deceitfully and untruly made wrought and builded timber wood etc to be put in safe custody and complaint made to justices of peace power to buy and provide in any of the places beyond the seas all such timber planks masts deals spars and wood and also all pitch tar rosin and oil as they shall think necessary and convenient for the building or repairing of ships pinnaces or other vessels and bring same to england or wales on payment of custom and other duties since the master wardens and commonality are to be as occasion shall be offered employed and attendant upon the navigation of us etc the said master wardens and commonality shall not be enforced but placed or impanelled in or upon any assizes juries inquests or attaints whatsoever nor be pressed or enforced to serve as land soldiers power to elect beadles to gather fines penalties etc and distrain power to hold land tithes etc witness ourself at westminster the two and twentieth day of april by writ of privy seal end of section thirteen Section 14 of Autobiography of Phineas Pett by Phineas Pett. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Charter to Shipwrights, 6th of May, 1612. Patent Roll, 1951. The first 19 lines as in the Charter of 1605. If speedy remedy be not therefore had and provided, and intending to provide for the strengthening of these our kingdoms and dominions, with sufficient shipping for defence and service thereof, and to the intent that as well ourself might from time to time be furnished, stored, and supplied, with the fittest and ablest shipwrights and workmen for the building, making, and repairing of our own ships, pinnaces, and other vessels, as also that of our merchants and other our subjects might also in their works and buildings from time to time be stored and supplied with skilful and sufficient shipwrights and workmen and for the better suppressing of deceits and abuses of diverse persons which should take upon them without sufficient skill and knowledge to make or repair any ships boats pinnaces or other vessels to the great danger and hindrance as well of ourselves as of diverse other our loving subjects 
we did by our letters patent under the great seal of england bearing date the two and twentieth day of april in the years of our reign of england france and ireland the third and of scotland the eight and thirtieth incorporate the company of shipwrights and the persons being shipwrights or carpenters using the art or mystery of building and making of ships within our realm of england and dominion of wales by the name of master wardens and commonality of the art or mystery of shipwrights of england and did grant unto them by our said charter or letters patent diverse privileges liberties and immunities mentioned and contained in the said letters patent tending to the reformation of the said abuses and deceits and whereas diverse defects and imperfections have been since by experience found to be in the said charter as well in the extent thereof to what persons it should extend as also in the want of sufficient authority and means to govern and order the said corporation and the men and members thereof and the affairs of the same and the shipwrights workmen apprentices using the said art and for want of power and means to reform prevent order and correct many contempts misdemeanours deceits and offences in the said art or mystery and the matters and things thereunto appertaining and to punish stubborn obstinate and disobedient persons of that profession whereby great and manifold errors deceits and inconveniences are still practised and continued to the great hindrance of the navigation of this kingdom the often loss and hazard of men's lives and goods and the special prejudice of our own service and the inconveniences and the special prejudice of our own service and the commonwealth know ye that for reformation amendment and supply of the defects and imperfections aforesaid and for redress of the said great and manifold errors enormities deceits and inconveniences at the humble petition of the said master wardens and commonality and for the great desire we have that good and convenient laws orders and ordinances should be established and used in and about the said corporation and company and the said art and mystery and for the advancement of the good estate of the shipping and navigation of this kingdom to the good service both of ourself and the commonwealth have of our special grace certain knowledge and mere motion granted constituted and ordained and by these presents for us our heirs and successors do grant constitute and ordain that all and every person and persons being shipwrights caulkers or ship carpenters or in any sort using exercising practising or professing the art trade skill or mystery of building making trimming dressing graving launching winding drawing stocking or repairing of ships carvels hoys pinnaces crayers ketches lighters boats barges wherries or any other vessel or vessels whatsoever used for navigation fishing or transportation within or about our realm of england and dominion of wales or of making trimming or repairing of masts tops pulleys pumps for ships oars or any other instruments or appurtenances of wood thereunto belonging to any other carpentry work whatsoever belonging to or used occupied or employed in or about any ships pinnaces or other vessel or vessels above mentioned or in any sort appertaining to shipping sailing rowing stocking launching or navigation shall from henceforth for ever be and shall be taken and accompted to be one body corporate and politic in matter deed and name by the name of master wardens and commonality of the art or mystery of shipwrights of redrith in the county of surrey and them by the name of master wardens and commonality of the art or mystery of shipwrights of redrith in the county of surrey we do for us our heirs and successors really fully and wholly erect make ordain create incorporate constitute and declare by these presents one body corporate and politic in matter deed and name and the said master wardens and commonality of the said art or mystery of shipwrights of redrith aforesaid shall from henceforth have perpetual succession and shall be at all times hereafter a body corporate and politic able and capable in deed and in law to have hold occupy possess enjoy and retain 
all and singular usages customs liberties privileges immunities jurisdictions franchises pre-eminences benefits profits and commodities whatsoever to them heretofore granted or belonging to hereafter to be granted or to be belonging or incident requisite or fit to or for them or for such a corporation to have and enjoy of what kind nature or quality soever they shall be to them and their successors for ever power to hold and dispose of lands and other properties to sue and be sued to have a common seal and further we will and for us our heirs and successors we do grant by these presents that from henceforth for ever there be and shall be one master three wardens and sixteen assistants of the said corporation art or mystery of shipwrights of redrith aforesaid to be constituted and chosen in such manner and form as hereafter in these presents is expressed and specified and for the better execution of the premises and also for the good rule and government of the master wardens and commonality of the art or mystery of shipwrights aforesaid from time to time forever we have assigned named ordained and constituted our well-beloved subject phineas pett our servant and ancient master shipwright to be the first master of the said art or mystery of shipwrights willing that the said phineas pett be and shall continue master of the said art or mystery from the day of the date of these presents until the morrow after the feast of st bartholomew the apostle now next ensuing and then and from thenceforth until some other meet and sufficient man of the said art or mystery of shipwrights aforesaid be elected and sworn to execute the said office of master of the said art or mystery of shipwrights of redrith aforesaid according to the ordinances and provisions in these presents expressed and limited if the said phineas pett shall so long live unless the said phineas pett shall happen in the meantime for some misgovernment or other just cause to be removed whom for such just cause we will and ordain to be removable according to the form herein expressed and also we have assigned ordained named and constituted our well-beloved subjects william burrell nicholas simonson and thomas dimmock three other shipwrights to be the first three wardens of the art or mystery of shipwrights aforesaid and moreover for the better assistance and counsel of the said masters and wardens in and about the execution of their several offices we have assigned named ordained and constituted our well-beloved subjects matthew baker william bright edward stevens nicholas clay john apslin peter pett thomas jenkins john graves robert bourne james marsh william hedger thomas wells william picks john may edmund jordan and richard watford to be the first and present sixteen assistants of the said art or mystery willing that they the said names as before and all other assistants of the said art or mystery for the time being shall be and continue assistants of the said art or mystery of shipwrights of redrith aforesaid for and during their natural lives and shall from time to time be aiding counselling and assisting unto the said master and wardens for the better government rule and direction of the said master wardens and commonality of the said art or mystery and every member thereof unless they or any of them shall be removed from the said place of assistant or assistance for some misdemeanour or other just cause who for such just cause we likewise will and ordain to be removable according to the form herein also expressed and for the better establishment of this our good intention and purpose and for the perpetual and constant continuance direction rule and government of the whole body of the said art or mystery and every member thereof we will and ordain that on the morrow next after the said feast of st bartholomew the apostle yearly hereafter the master wardens and assistants of the said art or mystery of shipwrights aforesaid for the time being or the greater part of them for that intent and purpose to be assembled at or in their common house or hall shall elect choose and nominate one person who hath formerly been warden 
of the said art or mystery to be master of the said art or mystery for the next year then following and shall at the same time and place elect choose and nominate out of the said assistants three that shall likewise be wardens of the said art or mystery which said master and wardens so as aforesaid nominated elected and chosen shall be and continue master and wardens of the said art or mystery unto the end and term of one whole year then next ensuing and further until some other master and wardens shall be respectively elected and preferred and chosen thereunto they and every of them first taking a corporal oath upon the holy evangelist before the master and wardens being their last predecessors or any two of them or before the assistance of the said corporation art or mystery or the greatest part of them for the due execution of their several offices respectively and also the oath commonly called the oath of supremacy which oaths we do by these presents give power and authority to the said master and wardens for the time being or any two of them or to the said assistants or the greater part of them to minister and take of the said person or persons so elected accordingly and then every such master warden and wardens so removed shall then instantly be chosen and elected to be assistant or assistants and so remain assistant or assistants in the room and place of him or them that shall be so chosen out of the said assistants to be master warden or wardens first taking his or their corporal oath or oaths power to majorities to remove master wardens or assistants for misdemeanour and elect others in vacancies caused by removal or death fine not exceeding ten pounds for refusing or neglecting the office of master or warden or not exceeding twenty nobles in case of the office of assistance and there shall or may be from henceforth for ever in all and every convenient and needful place and places of our kingdom of england and dominion of wales one or more honest sufficient and skilful person or persons of the said art or mystery which shall be and shall be called the deputy or deputies of the master wardens and assistants of the said corporation art or mystery to be from time to time hereafter elected nominated and appointed by the said master wardens and assistants or four of them whereof the master and one of the wardens of the said corporation art or mystery for the time being to be always two and to continue in the place or places of deputy or deputies of the master wardens and assistants of the said corporation art or mystery and for the time being from the time of their said election for the space of one whole year next ensuing or until he be for some just cause removed and some other of the said corporation art or mystery be elected nominated and sworn to the said office or place of deputy or deputies according to the true intent and meaning of these presents and we will ordain and command that every person that shall be from henceforth named and chosen to be deputy or deputies to the said master wardens and assistants during the time that he or they or any of them shall continue in his or their office or offices place or places of deputyship do and shall from time to time employ the uttermost of his and their endeavours abilities and skills in the due execution of this our charter and letters patent and of every branch article and thing therein contained and of all good and wholesome laws orders and ordinances which at any time hereafter shall be made and constituted by the said master wardens and assistants in every respect according to the true intent and meaning of the same and of these presents and in all other causes matters and things concerning the good and welfare of the said art and mystery and that they the said deputies for the time being and every of them shall be from time to time accountable to the said master wardens and commonality and their successors for all sums of money profits and commodities by them or any of them to be collected or received by reason or in respect of his said office or offices place or places of deputy or deputies and shall further before he or they execute or undertake the same office or place of deputy or deputies take a corporal oath 
for the true and due execution of the said office and place and also the oath commonly called the oath of supremacy and if any person or persons so named or elected to be deputy or deputies to the master wardens and assistants of the said corporation art or mystery for the time being as aforesaid shall accept the same office and deputation and then after shall wilfully and obstinately without good and just cause or excuse refuse to attend or execute the same so as no person so nominated be compelled against his will to hold such place of deputation above the space of two years together that then the said master wardens and assistants or the more part of them shall or may impose upon every such person so refusing to exercise the said office or place after such acceptance thereof as aforesaid a reasonable fine not exceeding twenty nobles to be levied and paid to the use of the said corporation and further we will and by these presents do grant unto the said master wardens and commonality and their successors that they and their successors shall and may have take and entertain one honest and discreet person in manner and form hereafter in these presents expressed to be nominated and chosen which shall be and be called the clerk of the said corporation art or mystery of shipwrights and we have assigned made constituted named and ordained our well-beloved subject and servant richard newman gentleman to be the present clerk of the said corporation art or mystery to be and continue in the said office during the term of his natural life unless he for some misdemeanour shall be removed or dismissed or shall surrender the same with power to company to choose successor power to name and appoint any inferior officers ministers and members as shall be needful and expedient in two or four the said corporation art or mystery or the good government and affairs thereof and to remove them power to admit receive and take in whatsoever person or persons being our natural born subjects as well as within this our realm of england as in other our dominions and places being under our obeisance and not otherwise which would be and are or shall be willing and desirous to be of the said corporation as a member or members thereof and that all and every person and person so to be admitted received and taken in by the said master wardens and assistants or the more part of them shall be from the time of his or their admission be called and accompted a brother and member or freeman of the said corporation in deed and in name and power to remove them and to the intent that as well ourself our heirs and successors as also all our merchants and other our subjects may from time to time hereafter be better furnished stored and supplied with cunning skilful and sufficient shipwrights and workmen of that kind for the making building and repairing of ships pinnaces and other vessels and for the avoiding suppressing or preventing as much as in us lieth of the manifold abuses and deceits therein daily practised and committed by such persons as are altogether unskilful having never been trained or brought up as apprentices in the said art or mystery according to the laws and statutes of this our realm of england we do therefore will and grant to the said master wardens and commonality of the said art or mystery of shipwrights of redrith and to their successors for ever that every freeman of the said company shall and may from time to time hereafter have take and keep one or more apprentice or apprentices to be trained and brought up under him in the said trade art or mystery of shipwright and that every such apprentice shall be by covenants bound by and to his master that shall entertain him as aforesaid duly and truly to serve him as his apprentice for and during the full space and term of seven years at the least and to be ordered and used to all intents and purposes according to the custom of the city of london and that the same covenant of apprenticeship be made by writing indented and registered or enrolled at their common hall before themselves in their said corporation by their clerk or his sufficient deputy or deputies for the time being and that such enrolment shall be good and effectual in the law 
to all intents and purposes against us our heirs and successors and against all other person or persons whatsoever any law statute custom or usage to the contrary in any wise notwithstanding willing and by these presents for us our heirs and successors straightly charging and commanding that no shipwright corker or ship carpenter or any other being a freeman of the said company and using exercising practising or professing the said trade skill art or mystery of building making trimming dressing graving launching drawing stocking or repairing of any ships pinnaces or other vessel or vessels whatsoever for navigation or traffic shall or may at any time or times hereafter receive have entertain or keep any apprentice or other servant being not already free of the said corporation or not having served with some other shipwright in the same trade to be used exercised trained or brought up under him in the said trade art or mystery as aforesaid except he first cause every such his servant or apprentice to be bound unto him by indenture for the said term of seven years at the least or for so many years as together with the years which he hath served in the said trade as aforesaid shall make up the number of seven years and do likewise cause his said indenture of apprenticeship to be registered or enrolled before the clerk of the company or his deputy for the time being as aforesaid within one month next after the taking thereof upon pain of our heavy displeasure and of such fine or other punishment as by the laws and statutes of this realm or by the laws and ordinances already made or hereafter to be made by the said master wardens and assistants of the said art or mystery for the time being or the greater part of them according to the true intent and meaning hereof shall or may be inflicted upon him or them that shall offend therein power to assemble convocate and congregate themselves together at or in their common hall or house being now at redrith in the county of surrey or in any other place or places for the same convenient and then and there to keep courts and consultation for the said corporation art or mystery and the affairs thereof and the perquisites issues and profits of the said court or courts so to be held and kept to leave take and perceive to and for the use of the said corporation for the better maintenance and preservation thereof without any account to be made or rendered to us our heirs or successors in that behalf and power then and there to treat consult commune determine and agree amongst themselves or with any other person or persons whatsoever of upon and concerning the good estate benefit conversation and wholesome rule government and ordering of the said corporation art or mystery and the men apprentices workmen workmanship and all other the affairs and things to the same belonging or thereupon in any wise depending and at in and upon such their assemblies meetings and conferences to make ordain and constitute such and so many good wholesome and reasonable laws statutes articles constitutions orders and ordinances whatsoever as to them or the greater part of them being then and there present whereof the master and one of the wardens for the time being to be always two shall seem reasonable necessary meet and convenient for touching or concerning the premises and for the better advancement performance and continuance of the same and also for the better directing how and in what order and manner the said master wardens and commonality and all other person and persons using the said art or mystery within our said realm of england or dominion of wales shall demean and behave themselves as well in all and singular matters and things touching or concerning the said art or mystery or any thing thereunto appertaining as also in their several offices functions ministries and businesses touching or concerning the said art or mystery as aforesaid and the same laws orders articles and constitutions so made or any of them to put in use and execute accordingly and at their will again to revoke alter or change when and as often as occasion shall thereto require 
the regulations etc when entered and registered in some public book to be kept for that purpose shall be holden as laws ordinances and statutes amongst them to be put in use and execution and shall bind all persons of the said corporation art or mystery and all shipwrights and workmen of that profession in any place port haven or town within our said realm of england and dominion of wales as well the subjects of the same our realm and dominions as strangers and aliens for and during the time of their being in or upon any part of our said realm coasts or dominions or any creeks or harbours of the same to observe obey and perform the same from time to time in all things as the same ought to be upon the pains penalties and punishments in the same to be imposed inflicted and limited so always as the said laws statutes articles orders ordinances pains penalties and punishments and every of them be agreeable to reason and justice and not contrary or repugnant to the laws statutes rights or customs of this our realm of england nor derogatory to the jurisdictions and pre-eminences of the lord high admiral of england for the time being or to the court of admiralty of england or the judges register or marshal of that court for the time being or any of them power to impose pains penalties punishments fines amercements and forfeitures and for default of payment to distrain the goods and chattels of such offender and the same to keep till they shall be satisfied or otherwise to bring their action for the same according to law and all and singular fines forfeitures sum and sums of money whatsoever due or hereafter to be due and received by reason of the said decrees orders and ordinances shall be to the use commodity and sole benefit and behoof of the said corporation without any account to other thing therefore to us our heirs or successors to be yielded paid rendered made or done in that behalf and without any let trouble molestation or interruption of any person or persons whatsoever for the same powers by writing under their common seal to ask levy have receive and take in all and every place and places within our said realm of england and dominion of wales as well of every master workman shipwright or other person or persons that shall hereafter make or build or cause to be made or built any new ship or ships vessel or vessels of the burthen of one hundred ton or more or less all and singular such profits dues duties fees allowances sum and sums of money whatsoever after such rate and in such manner and form as at any time or times heretofore themselves or their predecessors by any name or names of corporation by under or by force and virtue of any former charter or letters or letters patent by them or any of them given or granted or by any other lawful and reasonable way or means have or ought to have received had taken or enjoyed the same by way of tonnage quarterage poundage or otherwise and also all and every such fines amercements penalties sum and sums of money as shall be by force and virtue of these our letters patent or any their laws orders ordinances statutes or jurisdictions already made or hereafter to be made for the good government of the said company assessed or imposed upon any person or persons whatsoever and to enter and distrain any the goods and chattels of the person or persons so offending denying or withholding the same in any place or places whatsoever where the same goods and chattels or any of them shall or may be found and to sue for and recover the same dues duties allowances fines amercements penalties impositions sum and sums of money in any of our court or courts of record and to the end that the secret of the said art or mystery and the manner of our english building and new making of ships pinnaces and other vessels should for more strength and safety of our realms and kingdoms be kept secret to and within ourselves and our said realms and dominions and altogether unknown to aliens and strangers of other nations 
our will and pleasure is and we do by these presents for us our heirs and successors straightly charge and command that no person or persons whatsoever of the said art or mystery of shipwrights do at any time or times hereafter directly or indirectly by any way or means whatsoever presume or attempt to discover or make known to any foreigner or stranger not being a natural-born subject of us our heirs or successors or not being naturalized or indenized nor to any other person or persons not being free and sworn of and to the said corporation nor being a servant or apprentice to the said art or mystery of the secrets of the said trade art or mystery or the special manner of our english building or new making of ships pinnaces or other vessels as aforesaid nor do take any alien or stranger born being not naturalized or indenized to be his or their apprentice or servant upon pain of our high displeasure and of such further punishments as by the laws and statutes of this realm or the ordinances and laws so made or to be made by the said master wardens and assistants or the more part of them the same fine to be forfeited and paid by the person or persons so offending to the sole benefit use and behoof of the said corporation for the better maintenance and upholding of the same and relieving of the poor of the said corporation power to examine and punish by fine or such other correction as the quality of the offence shall deserve and require every person which shall unlawfully depart or go away from his work after he hath been hired or agreed withal for wages before the time or times of his retainer or retainers be expired or shall be found to grow mutinous stubborn or disobedient or in any way a provoker seducer or enticer of any other to any mutiny or disobedience to the hurt injury or likelihood of hurt or injury of the said corporation or of the good government and order therein or of any service whatsoever and also to examine hear and order all and every the complaints of or against any shipwright or other workman of the said corporation art or profession or of or against any of his or their journeymen apprentices or servants and of our more ample grace certain knowledge and mere motion and for the better suppressing and reformation of the deceits and abuses first above mentioned power given to and for the said master and wardens or any two of them for the time being and also to and for any two of the said assistants or other two persons being skilful or which hereafter shall be skilful in the said art or mystery being thereunto deputed and authorized by writing under the common seal of the said master's wardens and commonality first taking his or their corporal oath or oaths upon the evangelist for the due execution of the said offences for the said offices or places at all convenient time or times taking with them if need so require a constable or any other his majesty's officer or officers of the city town or place to search view and survey all manner of timber wood and other stuff provided prepared and fitted for the building making or repairing of any ships pinnaces or other vessels in any place or places whatsoever within our realm of england and dominion of wales or in either of them and also to search view and survey all and every the works and workmanship of all and every person and persons whatsoever in making working building and repairing any manner of ships pinnaces boats or other vessels whatsoever within our said realm of england and dominion of wales or either of them and that it shall and may be lawful to and for the said master and wardens or any two of them or their deputies so authorized as aforesaid all and singular ships pinnaces boats and other vessels hereafter to be built to view search and survey and such of them whereof the timber work at the time of such search shall not be fully finished and which at the time of such search view or survey so to be made as aforesaid shall be found to be so insufficiently falsely and deceitfully made wrought or repaired as they must needs be by that means dangerous to such as shall use or employ them 
to arrest and stay until the same shall be reformed amended repaired and made fit for navigation and our further will and pleasure is that if the said persons before by these presents authorized to make such search as aforesaid or any of them shall happen to find any sappy wood red wood or other insufficient wood or timber to be put into any ships pinnaces or other vessels or hewn wrought and fitted for that purpose that then the said persons or any of them shall forthwith charge and warn the makers or owners of such ships pinnaces or other vessels forthwith to take away the said sappy wood red wood and other insufficient wood and timber and to supply the same with other sufficient timber and wood and if within convenient time after such charge and warning given as is aforesaid the said sappy wood red wood and other insufficient wood and timber be not taken away and the same supplied with other good and sufficient timber and wood as is aforesaid that then warning given that then it shall and may be lawful to and for the said master and wardens or any two of them or any two of the said assistants or any such deputy or deputies as aforesaid to take and deface all such sappy wood and red wood and timber they shall find to be put in or apparently intended to be put into any ship pinnace or other vessel or hewn and cut out or wrought for that purpose manifestly tending to the prejudice and damage of us our heirs and successors or of any other our loving subjects merchants and mariners whose goods and lives are hazarded and often lost by reason of such ill stuff the use of all which sappy and red wood and other insufficient stuff we do hereby for us our heirs and successors straitly prohibit and restrain to be used or employed in any sort in or upon any ship or other vessel power to impose and inflict such punishment upon every offender in that behalf either by fine or imprisonment or both of them as by the laws or statutes of this realm or by any laws or ordinances to be made by the said corporation as is aforesaid shall or may be imposed or inflicted upon them for their offences in that behalf or otherwise that the said master and wardens of any two of them or such other person or person so authorised as aforesaid and which upon such search shall find any of the deceits and abuses aforesaid shall complain thereof to some justice or justices of peace within that place or country where such deceits and abuses shall be found and we do straitly charge and command all and every our justice and justices of the peace whatsoever to whom any such complaint or complaints shall so be made as is aforesaid that they and every of them shall by all good and lawful ways and means examine and find out the truth of the said complaints abuses and deceits and if upon due examination thereof they shall find that any such abuses and deceits have been committed as aforesaid that then they do cause the party or parties so offending to be indicted or otherwise punished for such his and their abuses and deceits either before our justices of peace in the county where the same abuses and deceits shall be committed and found at their sessions of the peace or before the justices of assize of the same county or before any other lawful judge or judges to the end that the said person or person so offending may receive such condign punishment as by the laws and statutes of this realm can or may be inflicted upon him or them for his or their offence or offences in that behalf and we do straitly charge and command the said master wardens and assistants of the said art or mystery and their successors for the time being that every once in every month at the least such search be made as is aforesaid and that the authority hereby in that behalf to them given be put in due execution without any respect of persons or partiality whatsoever provided always nevertheless and our will and pleasure is that neither the master nor wardens of the said art or mystery for the time being or any of their deputy or deputies so authorised to search as is aforesaid shall not by colour of these letters patent 
meddle with or do anything to the hindrance stay or prevention of any ship pinnace or other vessel that is or shall be at the time of such their search as aforesaid ready to go for an intended voyage or journey or the master owner mariners sailors or other officers of the same anything in these presents to the contrary thereof in any wise notwithstanding power to buy and provide in any the places beyond the seas all such timber planks masts deals spars and wood and wooden stuff and also all pitch tar rosin and oil as they shall think necessary and convenient for the building or repairing graving or fitting of ships pinnaces or other vessels and the same so bought and provided shall and may from time to time for ever hereafter bring or cause to be brought into this our realm of england and dominion of wales or any part or place thereof and the same discharge and lay on land paying to us our heirs and successors the full custom poundage and other duties due or which hereafter shall be due to us our heirs and successors any law statute custom proclamation or any other matter cause or thing to the contrary notwithstanding End of section fourteen. Section fifteen of Autobiography of Phineas Pett by Phineas Pett. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Charter to Shipwrights, sixth of May, sixteen twelve. Continued. And whereas for the better maintenance of navigation and encouragement of our loving subjects to increase shipping within this our realm, there is and hath been of ancient time an allowance given by us and our predecessors of five shillings sterling for every ton of any new builded ship to be rated according to the burthen of the said ship did contain in burthen one hundred tons or upwards in ton and tonnage, which laudable custom we being pleased to continue and finding it also convenient as well as for the avoiding of abuses that might be offered in rating and setting down the tonnage of the said ships and otherwise as also that the builder might have his right and due allowance of tonnage to appoint some person or persons of knowledge and experience for the surveying and overseeing of the true rates and tonnage in that behalf we did by our letters patent under our great seal of england bearing date the four and twentieth day of april in the third year of our reign give and grant john grent gentleman for and during his natural life the office and place of surveyor of the tonnage and burthen of all new builded ships of the burthen above mentioned or upwards from time to time within our realm of england together with the wages and fee of twelve pence by the day of lawful money of england for the exercising of the said office or place together with all and singular other fees profits commodities and allowances whatsoever to the same place or office in any wise due incident or appertaining with a proviso or clause therein contained that the said john grent in the rating and setting down of the tonnage and burden of the said new builded ships from time to time should use the advice or assistance of one of our shipwrights to be nominated and appointed by our high admiral of england for the time being and that all and every such bill of tonnage as should be presented to us be signed for the said allowance of five shillings upon every ton of the burden of the said ship should be first allowed under the hand of the said surveyor and signed by the said admiral or his deputy for the time being as hath been accustomed and whereas by our letters patent bearing date the eight and twentieth day of january in the fourth year of our reign we did grant or mention to grant unto humphrey jobson gentleman for and during his natural life the reversion of the said office or place of surveyor of the tonnage and burden of all new builded ships of the burden of one hundred ton above mentioned or upward from time to time within our realm of england next after the death forfeiture or surrender of the said john grent together with the wages and fee of twelve pence a day for the exercising of the said office and place and all and singular other fees profits commodities and allowances whatsoever to the same place or office in any wise due incident or appertaining as in and by the said two at several letters patent more at large appeareth and whereas of late we have been 
much wronged defrauded and abused in that sundry of the said ships for want of exact viewing surveying and measuring have been overrated in their burden and tonnage whereby we have been charged with the payment of a greater allowance than in truth we ought to have been know ye therefore that we reposing a special trust and confidence in the faithfulness experience care and honest and true circumspection of the master wardens and commonality of the said art or mystery of shipwrights and to the end that we our heirs and successors may not at any time from henceforth in like sort be defrauded wronged or abused do of our especial grace certain knowledge and mere motion give and grant to the said master wardens and commonality and to their successors for ever the office function and place of surveyor of the tonnage and burden of all new builded ships of the burden of one hundred ton above mentioned or upwards from time to time within this our realm of england together with the said wages and fee of twelve pence by the day and all other fees profits commodities and allowances whatsoever to the said office or place in any wise due belonging incident or appertaining and them the said master wardens and commonality and their successors we do by these presents for us our heirs and successors nominate ordained make and appoint surveyors of the tonnage and burden of all new builded ships from time to time within this our realm of england and dominion of wales to have hold exercise and enjoy the said office function and place and also to have receive and perceive the said wages and fee of twelve pence by the day immediately when and from and after such time as the estate and interest and interest estates and interests granted or mentioned to be granted to the said john grent and humphrey jobson respectively by death surrender forfeiture or other occasion cause or means whatsoever is are or shall be void ended or determined and whensoever the said office or place shall first happen or become void unto the said master wardens and commonality and to their successors for ever and for the better and more exact examination judging and finding out from henceforth of the true burden and tonnage of every ship and vessel that is or shall be capable of or intended to have or require the said allowance we do hereby for us our heirs and successors ordain decree grant limit and appoint and also straightly charge and command the said master and wardens for the time being by themselves or their deputies being honest skilful and sufficient persons as well to go on board every such ship and vessel and there to view and discern whether she be sufficiently and substantially built as is fit and required in that behalf that is to say with two orlops at exact measure taken of her length breadth depth and draught in water so as to rate and set down the true burden and tonnage thereof and to certify the same by letters testimonial under the common seal of the said corporation and the hands of the said master and wardens of the said art or mystery for the time being as they will ever after be ready upon their oaths and allegiance to approve the same and we do by these presents for us our heirs and successors straightly prohibit charge and command that no person or persons whatsoever shall or may at any time or times hereafter be capable of or presume to take receive and demand the said allowance of five shillings a ton as aforesaid until such due measuring rating and certificate be first had and made as aforesaid willing and requiring as well our lord high treasurer and lord high admiral of england and our treasurer and chancellor of our exchequer and also the said john grent and humphrey jobson and all other persons whom it may concern to take notice of our will and pleasure and the suppressing and reforming as well of the manifold errors deceits and abuses practised in the said profession art and mystery as also of the disorders and misdemeanours of diverse wilful stubborn and disobedient persons of the said profession art or mystery which can very hardly by any other means be redressed restrained or reformed and for the better continuing settling and establishing of good order discipline and government amongst them for the especial of our own service 
and the general benefit of all our loving subjects as well merchants as others we do give and grant to the said master wardens and commonality and their successors for ever by these presents that if any person or persons now practising using or professing or which hereafter shall practise use or profess the said art or mystery or any thing thereunto appertaining shall wilfully or obstinately oppose or resist the order rule and government of the said master wardens and assistants of the said art or mystery for the time being or shall refuse to obey or submit him or themselves to this our charter or letters patent and to such wholesome laws orders ordinances and institutions as are or shall be made by force and virtue thereof as aforesaid tending to the good service of us and our commonwealth and to the good estate and preservation of the said art or mystery or shall not well and honestly carry behave and demean him and themselves towards the master wardens and assistants of the said art or mystery for the time being and their deputy or deputies or other inferior officers respectively according to the true intent and meaning of these presents but after due and convenient warning notice or admonition given to him or them in that behalf shall still wilfully and obstinately persist persevere or continue in any wilful stubborn obstinate or disobedient course tending to the hurt and prejudice of us our heirs and successors or of any our loving subjects or the order rule and government aforesaid either by insufficient negligent or deceitful work or not performing of his or their duties or by purloining or embezzling of stuff by unlawful or disorderly departure from his or their work after he or they have been hired and such like or shall do and commit any act or acts directly or indirectly to the prejudice or hindrance of the said corporation or the good estate and proceedings thereof either by wilful absenting himself or themselves from the common hall and meetings upon due warning or by denial of ordinary and just duties or shall by ordinance or institution made by force of these presents or shall by mutinies combinations conspiracies or any such like wicked and unlawful course or practice persist or continue in the wilful breach neglect or contempt of this our charter or anything herein contained or any law ordinance or institution made by force of these presents that then in all and every or any of these cases before mentioned it shall and may be lawful to and for the said master wardens and assistants or any three of them whereof the master and one of the wardens to be always two severally to correct and punish such offender or offenders according to the quantity and quality of his or their offence or offences according to the laws and ordinances of the said corporation and according to the laws and statutes of the realm in that behalf respectively and whereas the greatest number of the workmen and other persons employed in the trades aforesaid are so very poor needy and of mean condition as no pecuniary malt can take hold of them and likewise so rude and disordered as no ordinary or civil censure can move them to yield obedience to rule or government and therefore some sharp and severe correction and restraint must necessarily be used towards them in many cases therefore our will and pleasure is and we do by these presents will and ordain that if any person or persons now using or which shall hereafter use or exercise within the said realm of england or dominion of wales the said art trade or mystery of shipwrights or other the work or trade aforesaid shall obstinately resist and withstand the government of the said master wardens and assistants or their lawful deputy or deputies and shall after admonition and warning given unto them or any of them in that behalf wilfully persist in such disobedient course either by deceitful working or by unlawful departure from their work after they have been hired and within the time or times of their retainer or shall by combination conspiracies or other unlawful practices seek to overthrow destroy and bring into contempt the powers privileges and authorities by these presents given and granted to the said master wardens and commonality and their successors 
for the universal benefit and good of our said realm dominion and subjects that then or in such cases the lord admiral of england for the time being upon complaint and proof thereof made to him shall take the body or bodies of all and every such notorious offenders and keep them under arrest until they shall conform themselves and reform what they have done amiss as aforesaid and forasmuch as a great part of the said art or mystery are continually for the most part employed and attendant upon the service and navigation of us our heirs and successors we therefore do will and grant that the said master wardens and commonality or any of them or their or any of their successors shall not at any time or times hereafter be informed put placed or impanelled in or upon any assizes juries inquests or attaints whatsoever before any judges justices or commissioners of us our heirs or successors out of the cities towns boroughs parishes or places where they or any of them do or shall happen to dwell unless they have lands or tenements lying out of the said cities towns boroughs parishes or places by reason whereof they or any of them ought to be charged nor shall at any time be pressed or enforced to serve us our heirs or successors as land soldiers but do absolutely and freely discharge them and every of them from any such service or attendance and we do further by these presents for us our heirs and successors straightly charge and command all and every sheriffs bailiffs and other officers of us our heirs and successors that they and every of them do from time to time forbear to put or impanel any of the said master wardens and commonality or any their deputy or apprentices in or upon any such juries or inquests as is aforesaid contrary to our said meaning and intent upon pain of our displeasure and of such pains penalties and imprisonments as the laws of this our realm can or may be inflicted or imposed upon them or any of them for their contempt in doing contrary to our royal pleasure and commandment in that behalf and whereas the master wardens and commonality of the said art and mystery of shipwrights of redrith aforesaid and there and every of their deputies and apprentices being continually for the most part charged and chargeable to be ready and provided at an hour's warning upon diverse services and employments as well at the sea for necessary defence and safety of our realms and kingdoms and for the use and employment of our merchants for continuance and increase of trade and commerce with foreign nations for the benefit and profit of us and our subjects as also to give attendance within our kingdoms for the new building repairing and trimming as well of the ships pinnaces and vessels of us our heirs and successors as of the ships pinnaces and vessels of our merchants and subjects therefore our will and pleasure is that if it shall happen the said master wardens and commonality or other persons which by the true intent and meaning hereof are and ought to be discharged from such service upon juries and inquests shall by sheriffs bailiffs and other officers ignorantly or wilfully be put and impanelled to serve upon juries and inquests contrary to our true intent and meaning in that behalf in certain our former letters patent granted and also in these presents renewed and that any of the said persons being absent from their houses and places of habitation at such times as they were or shall be summoned or warned to appear upon any such juries or inquests could not or cannot plead nor allege the said former letters patent nor these presents or privileges and authorities hereby given and granted unto them for their discharge in that behalf whereby diverse issues lines and immersements are many times returned against them contrary to our true intent and meaning we do therefore grant unto the said master wardens and commonality and to their successors for ever that if any issues fines or immersements shall be returned forfeited or imposed by or upon any of the said person or persons of the said corporation trade art or mystery for and in respect of not doing or not performing of any the said services or other things whereof they are hereby exempted or freed or mentioned to be exempted or freed 
that then the same person or persons, his and their heirs, executives, administrators, and assigns, and every of them, and all his and their lands, tenements, goods, and chattels, shall be forever freed and discharged of, and from the said issues, fines, and amercements, and every of them, and we do require and command the barons of our exchequer, that in respect of the poverty of many that are to be relieved in this case, they give them all expedition and ease in their proceedings and pleadings for their discharge in that behalf and because this corporation of shipwrights hath been principally instituted and made for the maintenance and increase of navigation and for the better and more substantial making building and repairing of ships and also for the training up and instructing of shipwrights ship carpenters labourers and workmen to make them more ready able and skilful for service all which things do very greatly concern the defence, safety, wealth, and profit of ourself, our kingdom, and subjects. Therefore we do not only straightly charge and command all and every person or persons which are or shall be of the commonality of this corporation, that they do dutifully submit themselves to such good and wholesome laws, statutes, and ordinances, as shall be hereafter ordained and made by virtue of these letters patent, for the government, rule, order and direction of this corporation and of all the members thereof but we do also straightly require charge and command all masters wardens assistants deputies and other the principal officers of this incorporation now being and that hereafter shall be that they and every of them in their several offices and places do carefully diligently and circumspectly look to the due and severe execution of all such laws, statutes, and ordinances, so as to be made as aforesaid, that the same may be truly performed and accomplished according to the tenor and true meaning of the same, upon pain of our heavy displeasure and indignation, and of such punishment and imprisonment as by our laws may be inflicted on them, and every or any of them, wherein our meaning is to extend the greater punishment upon such as having offices and places of trust and charge committed unto them shall by wilfulness negligence remissness partiality or otherwise offend themselves or suffer others to offend in those things whereof they ought to be the reformers and redressers and at whose hands we expect to receive and have amendment and reformation of all offences that shall be committed by any others in that behalf and forasmuch as the poverty of shipwrights and persons belonging to the said corporation is now much more increased than in former times and not able to be relieved supported and maintained by the duties and revenues of the said corporation which heretofore they have had or were enabled to have being so small in yearly value therefore and to the end the said master wardens and commonality and their successors may be from henceforth the better enabled from time to time to bear and sustain their charges and expenses drawn and occasioned by reason of the corporation and to relieve and maintain the poor of the same we have given and granted unto the said master wardens and commonality of the said art or mystery of shipwrights of redrith aforesaid and to their successors especial license and free and lawful faculty power and authority that they and their successors forever shall and may not only have receive and purchase to them and their successors forever to their own proper use and behoof as well as us our heirs and successors as of any other person or persons whatsoever manners messuages lands tenements rectories tithes rents reversions services and other hereditaments whatsoever which are not held of us our heirs and successors in chief or by night service nor of any other by night service so always at the same manners etc by the said master wardens and commonality or their successors so to be received purchased obtained or had as aforesaid do not exceed the clear yearly value of forty pounds by the year above all charges deductions and reprises the statute of lands and tenements not to be put in mortmain or any other statute act or ordinance provision restraint or any other matter cause or thing whatsoever to the contrary notwithstanding and further we do give and grant special license and full and free power and authority 
to any and every of the subjects of us our heirs and successors and to all and every body and bodies corporate and politic and other person or persons whatsoever and to every of them that they and every of them shall and may give grant bequeath assign or by any ways or means whatsoever alien devise or assure unto the said master wardens and commonality and to their successors for ever and any manners etc as before with same limitations and finally we do by these presents for us our heirs and successors straightly charge and command as well the lord admiral of england for the time being and also the judge of our admiralty and principal officers of the navy and all vice admirals marshals sergeants and other officers of our admiralty as also the lord mayor of our city of london and the sheriffs justices constables and other officers and ministers of the said city for the time being and also the several mayors of our cities of bristol and rochester and of our towns of yarmouth plymouth dartmouth ipswich southampton woodbridge hull and newcastle respectively for the time being and all other mayors sheriffs justices of peace bailiffs constables and other officers and ministers of us our heirs and successors whatsoever within our said realm of england and dominion of wales that they and every of them be from time to time and at all times hereafter helping aiding and assisting to the said master wardens and commonality and to their successors and to every and any of them for the time being and to every deputies officer or officers for the time being for ever as well in and for such search view and survey so as to be made as aforesaid as also for and in the execution of all and singular grants ordinances laws constitutions and orders herein contained or hereafter upon or by virtue of these presents to be allowed and approved in all things according to the true intent and meaning of the same upon pain of our high displeasure and as they will answer to the contrary and these are letters patent or the enrolment thereof shall be good and effectual in the law to the said master wardens and commonality and their successors to all intents constructions and purposes against us our heirs and successors for ever any act of parliament statute law provision proclamation restraint or other matter cause or thing whatsoever to the contrary thereof in any wise notwithstanding provided always that these are letters patent or anything therein contained shall not in any wise extend or be constructed to extend or be prejudicial to our sink ports or to the liberties or members of the same or of any of them or to any jurisdiction power or authorities of the lord warden of the sink ports for the time being which he hath or in any wise or sort he ought or may lawfully use exercise or claim to or with the office of the lord warden of the sink ports or of any other office or offices belonging incident or appertaining to the said office of the lord warden of the sink ports any grant power privilege matter or thing before in these presents contained to the contrary thereof in any wise notwithstanding although express mention etc in witness whereof etc witness ourself at westminster the sixth day of may per breve de privato sigillo end of section fifteen Section 16 of Autobiography of Phineas Pett by Phineas Pett. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. New Building, the Prince Royal at Woolwich. Pipe Office Declared Account, number 2249. Matthew Baker, one of His Majesty's Master Shipwrights, for his pains and charges in many journeys between Deptford and Woolwich during the time of the new building of His Majesty's ship the prince royal by special command from the lord treasurer and the lord admiral of england ten pounds robert beak and paul isaacson painters for painting and gilding his highness's ship the prince royal 
with fine gold and diverse colours wrought and laid in oil finding at their own charge all manner of stuff and workmanship that is the beak head three times primed and stopped his majesty's arms and badges with diverse beasts and the prince's arms all gilded with fine gold and wrought in oil colours sixty two pounds six shillings and eightpence for both the sides and all the carved work on both the sides as well as on the back side as foreside three times primed and stopped with his majesty's whole arms and badges on the two upper strakes the prince's arms and badges on the third strake the great mask head on the fourth strake all the foresaid arms with very much other work and the lower strake all gilded and wrought in oil colours a hundred and ninety pounds for the galleries three on each side priming three times the lower galleries with his majesty's beasts and badges the third with the like and very much other work all gilded and wrought in oil colours one hundred pounds for the upright in the stern with his majesty's whole arms and badges on the first second and third galleries on the stern with his majesty's arms and beasts and the prince's also on the lower counter two great mask heads three times primed and stopped all gilded and laid in oil colours one hundred and forty pounds for all the bulkheads the first in the poop the second afore the master's cabin the third afore the prince's cabin the fourth and fifth in the waist with the bell-house the sixth and seventh afore the foresail thereon some of his majesty's badges and much other work three times primed and stopped gilded and wrought in oil colours forty five pounds ten shillings for all the timbers within the board and all the plancers afore and abaft double primed and stopped and laid in oil colours ten pounds for the galleries within board primed and stopped and laid in oil colours six pounds for the prince's lodging cabin very curiously wrought and gilded with diverse histories and very much other work in oil colours one hundred and sixty four pounds for the state cabin gilded and very curiously wrought with diverse histories and much other works wrought in oil colours and varnished ninety pounds for the room above the state-room wrought overhead and on each side with sundry figures in oil colours fifteen pounds for the master's cabin wrought and varnished with his mate's cabins primed and laid in oil colours one hundred and ten shillings and for all the works under the half-deck double primed and stopped with very much works and up the stairs to the half-deck all laid in oil colours forty pounds in all eight hundred and sixty eight pounds six shillings and eightpence sebastian vickers for carved works by him wrought and performed aboard his highness's ship the prince lately new built at woolwich that is to say in the beak head for carving the george twenty pounds the trail board ten pounds the side board sixteen pounds of two boards for the half rail between the planchers nine pounds for fourteen brackets for both thirteen pounds six shillings and eightpence for two lions for the half rail fifty shillings of a serpent for the tax thirteen shillings and fourpence of two great mask heads for the two hawsers and of two fish heads for steadying the main knee thirty shillings for carving the sides without board that is of one hundred and four brackets along the sides without board twelve pounds six shillings and eightpence of forty seven compartments in the lower strake one hundred and ten shillings of fourteen great lion heads for the round ports ten pounds of twelve prince's badges in the middle strake twelve pounds for carving nine compartments in the same strake one hundred and ten shillings of the king's badges on the sides without board twenty two pounds of one pair of the king's arms and another of the king's and queen's together fifteen pounds of four terms on either side the arms seventy five shillings of four ports two in the bow and two in the quarter abaft with four taffrails one hundred and ten shillings of four scuttles of windows four pounds 
of eight trophies in the upper strake, one hundred and ten shillings, of fourteen brackets in the narrow strake, and twelve compartments, fifty-five shillings, and of four hansing pieces in the waist, fifty-three shillings fourpence, for carving the two sides in the lower gallery, twenty pounds, of twenty-six brackets, six pounds, of twelve supporters under the galleries, six pounds, and of the frieze round about, eight pounds, for carving of six panels with stories in the middle of the gallery, eighteen pounds, of sixteen arches, sixty shillings, of ten great terms, ten pounds, of fourteen little terms, six pounds ten shillings, of two great badges of the princes, eight pounds, of four of the prince's letters, twenty-five shillings, of ten dragons for supporters, one hundred shillings, of two great arches within the galleries, thirteen shillings and fourpence, and of four hansing pieces, forty shillings, for the carving the two sides on the upper gallery, fifteen pounds, of the ten brackets, forty shillings, of eight beasts, seventy shillings, of ten taffrails, twenty-five shillings, eightpence, for carving of four great terms in the stern, six pounds, of three great arches, sixty shillings, of two great lion's heads, thirty-three shillings, fourpence, of the rudder head and tiller, twenty shillings, of the planks cross the stern, six pounds, thirteen shillings, and fourpence, of the frieze, four pounds, of seven brackets, thirty-three shillings, fourpence, of two dragons, forty shillings, of seven pendants, sixty-eight shillings, of eight terms, seven pounds, ten shillings, of six arches, twenty-five shillings, of the prince's badges, four pounds, of two letters on either side of the badge, sixteen shillings, of two pieces of victory and fame, seven pounds, of the plank across the stern in the upper gallery, seven pounds, of six brackets, twenty-five shillings, of six beasts, sixty-six shillings and eightpence, and of five taffrails, fifteen shillings, for carving the king's arms ten foot wide in the upright, twenty-two pounds, and of two pyramids with two boys sitting on the top, showing for peace or war, six pounds, for carving four terms for the doors in the foresail, thirty-five shillings, of a frieze round about, thirty-five shillings, of four terms and four cartos, fifty-five shillings, and of two hansing pieces, forty shillings, for carving of six terms and six cantlappers, and two arches, for the doors in the foresail within board, six pounds, of three orpins, seventy-three shillings, fourpence, of six brackets, fifteen shillings, of four badges of the kings, sixty shillings, and of the bell-house and knight's heads, fifty-six shillings and eightpence, for carved work in the bulkhead abaft, that is, of six terms and six cantlappers, six pounds, of four cantlappers and six arches to give light under the half-deck, thirty-five shillings, of seven brackets and six compartments in the narrow frieze, thirty-five shillings, for carving twelve arches on both the sides of the half-deck, and of twenty-eight brackets, seven pounds, for carving of six terms, for three doors and six cantlappers, with three arches on the quarter-deck, nine pounds, of two terms and two cantlappers, thirty shillings, and of two hansing pieces and the knight's heads, thirty shillings, and for carving two orpins and two brackets on the round-house, twenty shillings, and of two hansing pieces, twenty shillings, in all, four hundred and forty one pounds and fourpence. End of section sixteen. Section seventeen of Autobiography of Phineas Pett by Phineas Pett. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Petition to the Admiralty. Privy Seal Dominus Charles the First, one hundred and ninety four. 47. Noble sir, I have nothing to tender you for many favours received from you, but the return of my thanks, and particularly for this last courtesy about the petition delivered against me, which I have herein enclosed, 
returned together with my answer desiring you to be pleased it may be both presented and read to the lord's commissioners whose order herein i shall with all humble submission assent unto not doubting of your careful favour herein which i shall study to requite with my best acknowledgments beseeching you to be pleased so far to mediate for me that the plaintiff may not have power from their lordships to bring disgrace upon me whereby his majesty's service may suffer as well as myself by giving leave to have me intercepted when i am to attend the ordinary meeting of the principal officers of his majesty's navy within the city where they wait for advantage so leaving myself to your care i take leave and rest at your service phineas pett chatham twenty second of june sixteen thirty one i pray sir be pleased to return me word by the bearer when his majesty is to go to plymouth endorsed to my honoured friend edward nicholas esq secretary to the right honourable lords commissioners the admiralty of england westminster forty seven one to the right honourable the lords and other commissioners of the admiralty of england the humble answer of phineas pett his majesty's servant to the petition of lewis tate smith i do acknowledge i become debtor to this petitioner for ironwork delivered to the building of a new ship called the destiny built by me for sir walter raleigh from whom i could never receive satisfaction for the said work by seven hundred pounds which i was forced to venture with him in his voyage wherein he failing and at his return the ship seized into his majesty's hands i suffered the loss of the whole debt i was contented to give this petitioner my bond for payment of his debt notwithstanding my great loss some part whereof was orderly paid and the rest i should have easily satisfied had not a greater loss presently befallen me through the occasion of building two small ships for the expedition of algiers wherein i sustained by the overworks and charge of the journey wherein i served as captain in one of those ships the loss of above nine hundred pounds towards which i could never hitherto recover one penny satisfaction by these two great losses suddenly befalling me almost together i was utterly disabled either to satisfy the debts arising from these businesses or to raise means to maintain myself and poor family notwithstanding i have out of the little remnants of my poor fortunes paid above five hundred pounds of these debts within the space of six years which i never so much as drank for and i do yearly still contribute the better half of my small means towards the satisfying the rest as carefully as i can i have always entreated this petitioner's patience as knowing his abilities better able to forbear than others interested as himself in the same business he having also made more gain by his commodities than any other always tendering satisfaction to him as i could take of other debts to the utmost my fortunes would extend unto and am very ready and willing yearly to pay unto him such a sum as your lordships in your honourable consideration of the premises and my present fortunes shall order me to do humbly submitting myself to your lordship's favourable construction phineas pett end of section seventeen section eighteen of autobiography of phineas pett by phineas pett this librivox recording is in the public domain stowe manuscript seven four three folio fifty right honourable my most humble services presented lest i should be the last in expressing my duty and humblest service being so infinitely obliged to your most noble favours i rather choose to incur the censure of presumption than the just imputation of ingratitude being hopeful for the first to procure your honourable pardon for the last it is beyond the plea of all excuse please your lordship to understand that since your posting from tibbles receiving direction for making ready the prince i brought her into dry dock at chatham there thoroughly searched her and strengthened her in all suspected places new made and repaired all her masts and launched her again within fourteen days and have in all points been so careful to prepare all rooms for state 
ease convenience and ornament as i hope will give your lordship as much content as can be in any ship contrived the cook-room is by a powerful command against my consent removed from the old place in hold into the foresail in which i was much overborne having had the experience of the conveniency thereof in my personal service in former transportation the prince is at present in such forwardness as if there be no other wants she may be at sea in fourteen days and is now taking in her beer and other provisions all the fleet are in the same readiness the george and the antelope making all possible haste to get to sea and this is the account of the business here under my charge which in all humbleness i held my duty to present your lordship were it not that i intend to wait upon your lordship in the great ship i would have procured his majesty's leave to have come with sir francis steward i hold myself very unhappy to be from attending your lordship in any sea service thus humbly craving your lordship's honourable construction of this my presumption and pardon for my boldness which i cannot but do in zeal of my service praying god to send your lordship increase of honour health happiness and a prosperous return in all humbleness i kiss your lordship's hand and ever remain your lordship's creature phineas pett chatham the tenth of april sixteen twenty three to the right honourable lord marquis of buckingham lord high admiral of england give these End of section 18section nineteen of autobiography of phineas pett by phineas pett this librivox recording is in the public domain protest of trinity house against the building of the sovereign privy seal dominus charles i two hundred and seventy three twenty five right honourable being informed that his majesty is minded to build a great ship of these dimensions namely one hundred and twenty four foot by the keel in breadth forty six and for draught in water twenty two foot these strange and large dimensions gave us cause to fall into discourse and in our discourse fell on these particulars following namely that a ship of this proportion cannot be of use nor fit for service in any part of the king's dominions and as unfit for remote service our reasons first there is no port within this kingdom the isle of wight only that can in safely harbour this ship then it followeth if she be not in port then is she in continual danger exposed to all tempests to all storms that time shall bring in a desperate estate she rides in every storm in peril she must ride when all the rest of her companions his majesty's ships enjoys peace rides quiet and safe in port for example we have the prince in her voyage to spain for his majesty in foul weather when all the fleet harboured in the port of plymouth the prince she only might not for she could not she being too big her draught too much the wild sea must be her port in the sound of plymouth must she ride her anchors and cables her safety if either of them fail the ship must perish four or five hundred men must die and the king must lose his jewel and this will be the state of this ship that she cannot harbour is her greatest draught in water and less in draught she will not be but could she be made to draw less water yet anchors and cables must hold proportion and being made they will not be manageable the strength of man cannot wield nor work them but could they do it yet the ship little bettered in point of safety for we are doubtful whether cables and anchors can hold a ship of this bulk in a great storm for we have more in our seas to add stress to cables and anchors than the wind and foaming sea we have strong tides which strain both cables and anchors equal to wind and sea besides the particulars there are many things which must concur for if either fail the rest hold not for example if the cables fail the anchors are of no use if the anchors fail then neither cable nor anchor is serviceable nay if the ground be not good then is all the rest to no purpose so that either of these fail all is lost 
the ship lost with all her provisions the men lost and it may be some great and noble peer in her thus far so much as may concern the safety of this ship being built now for the force of this ship it will not any way hold proportion with her bulk or burden for the aim must be for three tier of ordnance the lower tier which must carry the greatest ordnance and be of greatest force must lie of necessity so low that in every gale of wind the ports must be shut in or else the ship will be in great danger or sink as did the mary rose in king henry the eighth's time at portsmouth or if you will lay them at five or five and a half foot then must the third tier lie at that height as not to be serviceable nay this third tier will rather endanger the quality of the ship as the too high building hath in some of the king's ships lately built made them unfit for any good service therefore three tier of ordnance must not be neither can the art or wit of man build a ship well conditioned and fit for service with three tier of ordnance but if it be forced that his majesty desireth then shall he do well to forbear the building of this ship and with the same cost or charge to build two ships of five or six hundred ton apiece either ship to have forty pieces of good ordnance and these two ships will be of more force and for better service and will beat the great ship back and side these particulars right honourable falling within the compass of our discourse we held it our duty to his majesty to impart the particulars unto you and with your wisdom to leave them either to impart them unto the king or otherwise as it shall seem best unto your wisdom and so we rest your honours ever at command t best walter coke robert salmon from ratcliffe ninth of august sixteen thirty four to the right honourable sir john coke principal secretary to his majesty end of section nineteen section twenty of autobiography of phineas pett by phineas pett this librivox recording is in the public domain ships built or rebuilt by phineas pett rebuilt moon sixteen o two seventy four tons fifty foot length of keel seventeen foot breadth seven foot depth thirteen guns rebuilt the answer sixteen o three to four two hundred and seventy four tons sixty five foot length of keel twenty sixth of breadth thirteen of depth nineteen guns the disdain sixteen o four twenty five foot length of keel twelve of breadth the resistance sixteen o four one hundred and forty tons merchant ship rebuilt the ark or anne royal sixteen o seven to eight eight hundred and twenty eight tons one hundred and seven foot length of keel thirty seven foot ten inches of breadth fifteen foot four inches of depth forty four guns the prince royal sixteen o eight to ten eleven hundred and eighty seven tons one hundred and fifteen foot length of keel forty three foot breadth eighteen foot depth fifty five guns rebuilt by peter pett in sixteen forty one the phoenix sixteen twelve to thirteen two hundred and fifty tons seventy two feet length of keel twenty four feet breadth eleven feet depth twenty guns rebuilt the marona sixteen thirteen to fourteen nine hundred and forty six tons one hundred and twelve feet length of keel thirty eight feet seven inches breadth sixteen feet five inches depth forty guns rebuilt the defiance sixteen thirteen to fourteen seven hundred tons ninety seven feet length of keel thirty seven feet breadth fifteen feet depth forty guns p 
Pinnace, 1616. Forty feet length of keel. For Lord Zouch. Destiny, Convertive, 1616. 621 tons. 96 feet length of keel. 32 feet 4 inches breadth. 15 feet depth. 34 guns. Mercury, 1620. 300 tons. For the Merchant Committee of the Algiers Expedition. The Spy, 1620. 200 tons. For the Merchant Committee of the Algiers Expedition. Henrietta, 1627. 68 tons. 52 feet length of keel. 15 feet breadth. 6 feet 6 inches depth. 6 guns. Maria, 1627. 68 tons. 52 feet length of keel. 15 feet breadth. 6 foot 6 depth. 6 guns. Charles, 1632 to 3. 810 tons. 105 feet length of keel. 33 feet 7 inches breadth. 16 feet 3 inches depth. 44 guns. Built with Peter Pett. The Greyhound. 1636. 126 tons. 60 feet length of keel. 20 feet 3 inches breadth. 7 feet 8 inches depth. 12 guns. Built with Peter Pett. The Roebuck, 1636. 90 tons. 57 feet length of keel. 18 feet 1 inch of breadth. 6 feet 8 inches depth. 10 guns. Built with Peter Pett. Sovereign of the Seas, 1635 to 7. 1,522 tons. 127 feet length of keel. 46 feet 6 inches breadth. 19 feet 4 inches depth. 102 guns. Built with Peter Pett. The Arms of Pett. The arms granted to Peter Pett in 1583 were, or on a fess gules between three roundels sable, a lion passant of the field, and for a crest, out of the ducal coronet, or a demi-pelican, wings expanded argent. Several impressions of Phineas Pett's seal displaying these arms, without the crest, are preserved on his letters in the state papers. End of section 20 End of Autobiography of Phineas Pett by Phineas Pett